Alrighty, all the systems for the backyard are installed and tested. It's almost time to lay the sod, but there are several key steps to complete beforehand. So let's get to it. The first thing to do is put a planter around the fruit trees to separate them from the grass. I used a wide rake to smooth out the ground and make it as flat as possible. The planter will have a four foot radius. I added a heavy duty weed barrier around the base of the tree, extending past that four foot mark. I used some landscape staples to secure it down. Next, I brought in the pavers. These are all salvaged from the yard from a few years ago. I can't remember exactly where they were pulled up from, but I have a stack of about 90 stones to use. I placed them in their rough location, then used a measuring tape to really get them into their precise spots. The pups came by to sign off on their new potty spot. The grass will go right up to the pavers, so I cut off the excess weed barrier at the outside edge. The weight of the pavers will help keep the weed barrier from shifting around. I followed the exact same process for the tangerine tree. I've been a big fan of rubber mulch. It's made of recycled tires and is supposed to last at least 10 years without losing its color. The dogs like chewing on wood chips, but seem to ignore this stuff entirely. It's more expensive than normal wood mulch, but the long-term benefits outweigh the short-term ones. I place the mulch in both planters and spread it around evenly. Eventually, the sprinkler box will end up in the shed, but for now, I just attached it to the wall in a relatively shady spot. All the trenches were already filled except for this spot right here, the spot of the sprinkler valve manifold. Alrighty, now it's time to finalize the grading. There's a place where I can go pick up dirt loads. They dump the material directly into the back of my truck. I order a yard at a time and they give very generous pours. It's super convenient because I can park my truck at the edge of the dirt, offload it right into the wheelbarrow and dump it right where I think it's needed. I started at the far edge of the yard and worked my way back, working the levels to get it just right making sure there aren't any valleys that would pool water during a heavy rain. I found out that using the back of this rake was the best way to smooth out the dirt. After working a section, I used the new sprinklers to wet it down. It took a few truckloads of dirt to do this step. Also, this is a gypsum soil, the same stuff that I used to mix into the clay when I tilled it. A while ago, the boss lady and I decided to put an avocado tree in this spot of the backyard. That's what the sprinkler bubbler is for. We went to our local nursery, chose a relatively mature tree, 
and brought it home to plant. I mean, <laughs> how much more California can we get by having an orange tree and an avocado tree in our backyard? I dug a small pit for the new tree, slightly deeper than the pot it came in. I used a bar spread across the gap to make sure I got an accurate measurement on the depth of the hole. I brought the tree over, removed it from the pot, and placed it. It's important to get the tree growing vertical, so it can eventually stand without needing supports. So, while filling in the pit with healthy new soil, I made sure to get the trunk and support perfectly vertical. I left a shallow basin about three feet in diameter around the tree to hold water as it soaks into the dirt. This will make sure that the tree is getting enough water. I filled it in a few times right away to welcome it to its new home. Cheers. This is a reed avocado tree. The guy at the nursery said it should produce a few fruits next year. So we'll see. It was now the day before laying the sod. I made the mistake of letting the dogs run free in the backyard after smoothing out the dirt. So I had to go through with a rake and smooth it all out again. At this point, the dogs were banished from running around until after the sod was in. After raking the ground smooth, I filled up a roller with water and used it to generally compact the ground. This will help smooth it out even more and point out any spots that need adjusting. After rolling it once, I re-raked the entire thing and rolled it again. My buddy Sean came over and together we tag team the rest of this. After the rolling was complete, I ran all the sprinkler zones for a couple minutes each. This revealed a few low spots. I added more dirt accordingly. Again. The last major thing to do was put the edging down. We used a string line as a guide, then put the edging right up to the line. This helped make it as straight as possible. It's secured with plastic nails that drive into the ground. All the irrigation lines were deep enough to not be hit, but I still avoided driving a stake in where I knew there was an irrigation line. There was only one more sleep until sod day. Once all the edging was done, I ran the sprinklers to water the ground several times throughout the rest of the day and night. It didn't soak the ground, just brought up the moisture level to make it ideal for laying sod. The backyard is now ready for the last major step of this renovation. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. <laughs> you gonna bury, you wanna plant a tennis ball? You wanna grow a tennis ball tree? <laughs>